Well, good afternoon, everyone. Pastor Andrew here, and how is it already September? How is it that we've already gone three quarters of the way through this year? And I think some of us are feeling like 2020 can't end soon enough, though, given that everything that we've been thrown. So as you notice, I'm in the sanctuary today as I've decided to change locations a little bit and decide to add a little bit of music into today's reflection. I've always been a musician first before becoming a pastor and realizing that I'm kind of losing it a little bit with having been practicing as much. So this kind of gives me an incentive to practice and it's actually a way of devotion for me as well. One of my favorite art, Christian art piano pianists is Dino Kartsanakis and just rediscovered him on YouTube recently and he does a live session at his piano every night in Brentwood, Missouri. And so he always starts with a prayer about may his two hands and ten fingers glorify God. And so that's what I hope today too. So I hope everyone's having a good start of the week so far and it's kind of in the sleepy time of day right now. Might hear a helicopter or two fly over as the they're still fighting the bear fire, which is a little bit southwest of us, and we actually have decent air today, so the smoke has cleared out just a little bit. But today, as we reflect on the word, I decided to go to the upper room this week, and we have our new September October editions of the Upper Room Daily Devotional. And it's a way to read the scriptures and search the scriptures and hear God's word and then hear some reflections from everyday people. So today we're going to look in Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We're going to go to chapter 12 and read verses 1 through 10. So if you have your Bible with you or on a Bible app on your smartphone or device, let's listen to these visions and revelations that the Apostle Paul is writing to the Corinthians. I have to boast, even though it doesn't do any good. But I will now talk about visions and revelations given me by the Lord. I know a certain Christian man who 14 years ago was snatched up to the highest heaven. I do not know whether this actually happened or whether he had a vision. Only God knows. I repeat, I know that this man was snatched to paradise. Again, I do not know whether this actually happened or whether it was a vision. Only God knows. And there he heard things which cannot be put into words, things that human lips may not speak. So I will boast about this man, but I will not boast about myself except the things that show how weak I am. If I wanted to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be telling the truth. But I will not boast because I do not want any of you to have a higher opinion of me than you have as a result of what you have seen me do and heard me say. But to keep me from being puffed up with pride because of the many wonderful things I saw, I was given a painful physical ailment, which acts as Satan's messenger to beat me and keep me from being proud. Three times I prayed to the Lord about this and asked him to take it away. But his answer was, my grace is all you need, for my power is greatest when you are weak. I am most happy then to be proud of my weaknesses in order to feel the protection of Christ's power over me. I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the understanding of this word. And so in our first reflection in the upper room for September, October, this comes from Dee Aspen in California, and she's a nurse and so she writes as a nurse in a busy surgical oncology unit i was feeling depleted slumped into a pew in the quiet hospital chapel i gazed mindlessly at a group of candles in the corner one flickered weakly how will i get through this shift lord i feel like that candle about to burn out the verse quoted above flashed through my mind bringing comfort our weakness is elicits God's compassion, not God's judgment. Reaching into my pocket for a pen to scribble my thoughts, I pulled out a latex glove. How useless it seemed. Then lifting my right hand, I studied its strong tendons and slipped into the blue glove. 
The lifeless material was now filled with form and strength. As I opened and closed my gloved fist, God reminded me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I left the chapel reassured that God's strength and power within me, not my weakness, would prevail. God did not ask us to be strong on our own. God asks us to pray and believe and that God's power is within us. We can trust God to fill us and equip us for any task. So when we find ourselves in our greatest weakness, remember that God's grace is there for us. God's compassion is there for us, not God's judgment. I know that sometimes when we go through tragedy or hardship in life or when we encounter a difficult time like we are in like right now with this virus and with the fires, some people may be quick to wonder, well, where is God in this? And so in our message this last weekend, we talked about where God is in the helpers, the firefighters, the people trying to provide aid. Although there is also another concept called theodicy, which is why bad things happen. And it's one of those mysteries and one of those things that, you know, things happen. It's just like with the fires. We live in forest land out here. Lightning, the lightning storms that came through ignited these fires. And, you know, it happens by chance. And so there's a whole study on the will of God that we could even do and engage in at some point. But even through all the hardships and through uncertainties in life, through difficulties in life, you know, we can trust in God. We can trust in Jesus. And so if you have a United Methodist hymnal at home, or if you just want to enter into a time of prayer as music is praying twice, as the St. Augustine is attributed to saying, I invite you to turn to page 507 in the United Methodist hymnal, and we will sing together through it all. So through it all, even through struggles, through hardships, God's grace is sufficient for us. God's word is something we can come to depend on and we can come to trust in God. And, you know, this is a reminder that I need from time to time. Because I know sometimes that I too get in that same situation where I start feeling down or sometimes faith might get on a shaky ground. But we got God with us through it all. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for today and that you are there with us through it all, through hardship, and that your grace is sufficient for us, that we can receive strength from Christ, and that through Christ we can do anything because of that strength and because of that grace. And so, Lord, be with us today, be with our fire crews as they continue to battle the fires within our area. Be with all of those 
who are affected by the wildfire throughout the state. As we know, there are other fires that are burning and be with those who are in difficult time, those who are feeling hopeless, those who are feeling weak. We pray, Lord, that your grace will work through each of them, that your grace will fill in the imperfections, that your grace will fill in the places where we are weak and give us strength to face each day. And so, Lord, be with us throughout the rest of this day as we be the hands and feet of Christ in this world. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen, and I hope to see you tomorrow. So I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and wish you peace and blessings.